Introduction Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into a topic that is both important and sometimes misunderstood. How a woman should submit to her husband according to the Bible. Chapter 1 Understanding Biblical Submission To understand biblical submission, we need to start with its definition. In the context of the Bible, submission is often described as a voluntary act of respect and support within the framework of a loving and mutual relationship. It is important to note that submission does not imply that one person is less valuable or capable than the other. One of the key passages on this topic is Ephesians 5.22.24, which says, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Another important passage is Colossians 3.18, which states, Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands, as is fitting in the Lord. These verses are often quoted when discussing submission, but it's crucial to understand them in context. Biblical submission is about a loving partnership where both husband and wife are committed to each other's well-being. It's about mutual respect and working together as a team. Submission is not about a woman being inferior to her husband or having no say in the marriage. Rather, it is about recognizing the husband's role as the leader in the family in the same way that Christ is the leader of the church. This leadership is characterized by love, sacrifice, and a deep commitment to the wife's well-being. In essence, submission in the Bible is about a wife choosing to support and respect her husband's leadership, while the husband is called to love and cherish his wife selflessly. It's a reciprocal relationship built on love, trust, and mutual respect. Chapter 2 Historical and Cultural Context To fully grasp the concept of biblical submission, it's essential to consider the historical and cultural context of the time when these texts were written. During the ancient Jewish and early Christian periods, societal norms and roles were very different from what we experience today. In ancient Jewish culture, women had specific roles within the family and society. They were primarily responsible for managing the household and raising children. Men, on the other hand, were often the providers and protectors. This division of labor was seen as complementary, with each gender contributing to the family's well-being in different ways. Early Christian communities, while revolutionary in many ways, still operated within the broader cultural norms of the time. The teachings of Paul and other apostles sought to guide these communities in living out their faith within the existing societal structures. This included instructions on marriage and family life. When Paul wrote about submission in Ephesians and Colossians, he was addressing specific communities with their own unique challenges and cultural norms. His teachings were intended to promote harmony and order within these communities, emphasizing the importance of mutual love and respect between husbands and wives. It's also important to recognize that the concept of submission in the Bible is deeply rooted in the broader theme of Christ's relationship with the church. Just as Christ loves and sacrifices for the church, husbands are called to love and sacrifice for their wives. This sacrificial love is the foundation upon which the call for wives to submit is built. Understanding the historical and cultural context helps us see that biblical submission is not about enforcing rigid gender roles or promoting inequality. Instead, it is about fostering loving and respectful relationships that reflect the selfless love of Christ. Chapter 3, Ephesians 5.22.24 explained. Now let's take a closer look at Ephesians 5.22.24, one of the most frequently cited passages on this topic. These verses say, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. At first glance, these verses might seem to place a heavy burden on wives, but it's important to read them in the context of the entire passage. Just a few verses later in Ephesians 5.25, Paul instructs husbands to love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. This command for husbands to love their wives sacrificially sets the tone for the entire passage. The analogy of Christ and the church is central to understanding these verses. Christ's leadership of the church is characterized by selflessness, love, and sacrifice. Similarly, a husband's leadership in the family should be marked by these same qualities. A wife's submission is a response to this loving leadership, not to authoritarian control. In practical terms, what does this look like in a modern marriage? 
It means that both husband and wife work together as a team, with the husband taking on a leadership role that is defined by love and sacrifice. The wife supports and respects this leadership, contributing her own strengths and perspectives to the relationship. Here are some practical examples of how these principles can be applied. 1. Decision Making In a marriage, there will be times when decisions need to be made. While both partners should have a say, the husband may take the lead in making final decisions, especially in situations where a consensus can't be reached. The wife's role is to offer her insights and support the decision made, trusting in her husband's loving leadership. 2. Conflict Resolution Conflicts are inevitable in any relationship. A biblical approach to conflict resolution involves both partners approaching the situation with humility and a willingness to listen. The husband leads by fostering an environment of open communication and seeking solutions that honor both partners. 3. Spiritual Leadership The husband is called to lead the family spiritually, encouraging practices such as prayer, Bible study, and church involvement. The wife supports this leadership by actively participating and contributing to the family's spiritual growth. 4. Daily Life In everyday life, submission and leadership are expressed through small acts of love and respect. This might involve the husband taking initiative in caring for the family's needs and the wife responding with gratitude and support. It's important to remember that these principles are not about rigid roles but about a dynamic and loving partnership. Submission is not about losing one's identity or voice but about embracing a supportive and respectful role within a loving relationship. Chapter 4. Complementary Roles in Marriage Building on the concept of submission, it's important to understand the idea of complementary roles in marriage. Complementary roles recognize that husbands and wives have different but equally valuable roles to play in the marriage. These roles are designed to work together harmoniously, enhancing the strengths and supporting the weaknesses of each partner. 1. The Foundation of Complementary Roles The foundation of complementary roles can be found in the Bible. Ephesians 5.21 says, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. This mutual submission sets the stage for the specific roles outlined in the following verses. While wives are called to submit to their husbands, husbands are called to love their wives sacrificially. The concept of complementary roles is about recognizing and valuing the unique strengths and contributions that each partner brings to the marriage. It's not about adhering to strict gender roles, but about working together in a way that honors and supports each other. In a Christian marriage, the husband's role is often seen as the leader and protector, while the wife's role is seen as the nurturer and supporter. These roles are complementary, meaning they work together to create a balanced and harmonious relationship. 2. Biblical Basis for Complementary Roles Several passages in the Bible highlight the idea of complementary roles. For instance, 1 Peter 3, 7 states, Husbands, in the same way be considerate as you live with your wives, and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. This verse emphasizes the importance of mutual respect and consideration within the marriage. Similarly, Proverbs 31 describes the ideal wife as a strong and capable woman who contributes significantly to her household. She is praised for her wisdom, diligence, and strength, showing that the biblical model of a wife includes a wide range of responsibilities and attributes. 3. Understanding Leadership and Support Complementary roles are rooted in the idea of leadership and support. The husband leads by serving and sacrificing for his family. His leadership is characterized by love, humility, and a desire to see his wife and children flourish. The wife supports this leadership by offering her insights, talents, and encouragement. This dynamic is not about one partner dominating the other, but about each partner fulfilling their God-given roles in a way that benefits the entire family. The husband's leadership should be loving and selfless, while the wife's support should be respectful and wholehearted. 4. Practical Aspects of Complementary Roles Living out complementary roles in marriage requires practical application. Here are some key aspects. Decision-making. In a marriage, decisions need to be made regularly. While both partners should have a say, the husband may take the lead in making final decisions, especially in situations where a consensus can't be reached. The wife's role is to offer her insights and support the decision made, trusting in her husband's loving leadership. Conflict resolution. Conflicts are inevitable in any relationship. A biblical approach to conflict resolution involves both partners approaching the situation with humility and a willingness to listen. 
The husband leads by fostering an environment of open communication and seeking solutions that honor both partners. Spiritual leadership. The husband is called to lead the family spiritually, encouraging practices such as prayer, Bible study, and church involvement. The wife supports this leadership by actively participating and contributing to the family's spiritual growth. Daily life, in everyday life, submission and leadership are expressed through small acts of love and respect. This might involve the husband taking initiative in caring for the family's needs and the wife responding with gratitude and support. 5. Embracing strengths and weaknesses. Each partner brings different strengths and weaknesses to the marriage. Complementary roles involve recognizing these differences and working together to balance each other out. For example, one partner might be better at managing finances while the other excels at nurturing relationships. Understanding and appreciating these differences is key to a successful marriage. By leveraging each other's strengths and supporting each other's weaknesses, couples can create a strong and harmonious partnership. 6. Shared Responsibilities While the husband may take the lead in certain areas, it's important for both partners to share responsibilities and work together as a team. This includes practical tasks like household chores, parenting, and decision-making. For example, household management should be a shared responsibility. While the husband might take the lead in certain areas, both partners should contribute to the household's upkeep and well-being. This ensures that neither partner feels overwhelmed or undervalued. 7. Mutual respect and honor. Complementary roles are grounded in mutual respect. Both partners value and appreciate each other's contributions and work together to build a strong and healthy marriage. Respect is a two-way street. Husbands are called to love and honor their wives, treating them with kindness and consideration. Wives, in turn, are called to respect and support their husbands, acknowledging their role as the leader in the family. 8. Practical Examples of Complementary Roles Let's consider some practical examples of how complementary roles can be lived out in daily life. Parenting in parenting, complementary roles might involve the husband taking on a protective and guiding role, while the wife provides nurturing and emotional support. Both roles are essential for the healthy development of children. Career and home life. In a modern context, both partners may have careers. Complementary roles involve balancing work and home life in a way that supports each other's goals and responsibilities. This might mean one partner taking on more household responsibilities while the other focuses on their career, or both partners sharing the load equally. Emotional support. Complementary roles include providing emotional support to each other. The husband might offer strength and stability in times of stress, while the wife provides empathy and understanding. Both forms of support are crucial for a strong marriage. Financial planning. Financial planning is another area where submission can be practiced. Couples can work together to create a budget and financial plan with the husband leading the process and the wife providing valuable input and support. 9. Challenges and Solutions Living out complementary roles in marriage is not without its challenges. Here are some common challenges and solutions. Miscommunication Miscommunication can lead to misunderstandings and conflicts. To overcome this, couples should prioritize open and honest communication, ensuring that both partners feel heard and understood. Balancing Roles Balancing complementary roles can be challenging, especially when both partners have demanding careers or responsibilities. Couples should work together to find a balance that works for them, being flexible and willing to adjust as needed. Cultural expectations. Cultural expectations and societal norms can sometimes conflict with biblical teachings on complementary roles. Couples should seek to align their marriage with biblical principles. Personal differences, personal differences in personality, preferences, and strengths can impact how complementary roles are lived out. Couples should embrace these differences and work together to find a harmonious balance. 10. Encouragement and hope. Living out complementary roles in marriage is a journey that requires commitment, patience, and love. It's important to remember that no marriage is perfect, and both partners will make mistakes along the way. However, with God's guidance and a willingness to grow and learn, couples can build a strong and fulfilling marriage. Here are some encouraging reminders. God's design, complementary roles are part of God's design for marriage, reflecting His wisdom and love. Embracing these roles can lead to a deeper and more meaningful relationship. Growth and learning. Marriage is a journey of growth and learning. Embrace the process and be willing to adapt and change as you grow together. Support and prayer. Seek support from your church community, mentors, and friends. 
pray together and for each other, asking God to strengthen your marriage and guide you in living out your roles. Celebrate each other. Celebrate each other's strengths and achievements. Acknowledge the unique contributions that each partner brings to the marriage and express gratitude for each other. Thank you for watching this chapter on complementary roles in marriage. Stay tuned for the next chapter, where we will discuss how to apply the principles of submission in modern times. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe for more content on building a Christ-centered marriage. God bless.